right, Giants fans. Listen, man, let's not dilly dally. Let's not get any pleasantries. Let's just get it all the way. Let's get right into this, man. Week one, NFL football is here. Giants football is here. This is the first time I'm doing a football preview video for the New York Giants since week 17 of 2019, man. Jesus Christ, I am like, I'm beyond words, man. I can't believe it's finally here. I can't believe we're getting football. I really want to gush over it so much, y'all. Y'all, who you guys don't even know, man. I'm actually recording this on Thursday, so I'm recording this on day one of the NFL season right now, which I which I kind of find a little bit poetic, but let's just get into it, man. Steelers at Giants. Week 1, 2020 NFL season. Week 1, 2020 New York Giants season. Together blue, Giants pride keeps sleeping on us. Listen, man. Let me get into this preview. Let's talk about the Steelers. Let's talk about the Giants. This is a game right now that has so many implications that it's honestly a good thing that we're having the Steelers week 1 because it's a team that's going to be very tough to beat. It's going to be a battle that honestly we're probably going to lose. But it's going to be a struggle that we get out of the way early. But if we conquer it, the implications from overcoming the hump, from overcoming the mountain that is the Steelers, would spell nothing but good things for the Giants, you know, every single week after that in the season. Because we got the Bears week two. And if we can beat the Steelers week one, surely we can go and beat the Chicago Bears week two. And then all of a sudden, the Giants are off to a 2-0 and start. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Let's talk about what these two teams are made of. And what the Giants might have to go through and have to do to even want to win this game. You know, to even, you know, have a little bit of a slim chance to win this game. Of course, they want to win it. So let's go over injury reports if there's any available, first of all. Now, here's the thing that I don't like. On both teams' websites, their injury reports are completely empty. They have no players listed as injured. But as Giants fan, we know that Golden Tate is a bit nicked up. Um, You know, he has something with his hamstring. He He's, you know, maybe struggling a little bit with his hamstring that was a report that came out from giants beat reporters um i do expect him to play week one probably in a limited role uh i do expect him to be out there on the field he hasn't had something too serious where it's like uh he's gonna miss week one although i don't expect him to be on the punt return team um i think jabril peppers is gonna take his place for the first uh maybe the first couple games until he's back to full health whatever that is and then on the steelers side like i mentioned their injury report is also empty but reports have come out about one of their starting offensive linemen, David DeCastro, that he might be out week one, that he might miss week one with an injury. He might just not play, which does put the Steelers at a bit of a disadvantage on their offensive line there. I just don't know why either teams haven't actually updated their injury reports yet on their website. Maybe they're waiting until the last minute because maybe uh, Golden Tate, I almost said Sterling Shepard, because maybe Golden Tate actually does not play and somehow, someway, maybe David DeCastro actually does play. We shall see then, but keep those two names in mind. Speaking of which, a Golden Tate and how I mentioned Jabril Peppers, let's talk about the special teams for a second here. As we all know, Joe Judge is a special teams guy. He was a special teams coordinator and wide receivers coach before he came to the Giants. That is, you know, pun intended, his specialty. That is what he knows like the back of his hand. Um, here's the thing. Joe Judge is also a strong believer in putting starters on your special teams, as evident by Jabril Peppers being a captain on special teams, our starting strong safety, who we kind of expect to be used a little bit like a Swiss Army knife. Um, then again, I will say this week one game is going to reveal a lot of things to us Giants fans and kind of to the NFL in general. What kind of coach is Joe Judge is going to be? Is he going to be off hands like he says he is? Is he going to micromanage things? Um, how is the Giants offense going to look under Jason Garrett? How is the defense going to look like under Patrick Graham? And like I said for here, how is the special teams going to look under the returning special teams coordinator, Thomas McGahee? And with Thomas McGahee last year and with, you know, honestly, an inferior special team squad to what we have this year, the Giants still ranked top 10 in the league. We were number seven in special teams, according to Sports Illustrated. Pittsburgh, although not that far behind at number nine. So very close there. But I do think the Giants improved this year. We got a better kicker. Um, we have the same punter. We got a better long snapper for sure. I think a return game has improved. The, on the only thing that I'm not quite so sure about is our gunners on special teams uh, because I honestly don't know who's going to be at those spots and that's going to help us out a lot because last year a Cody Core who went out with an injury this year who was our special teams gunner had great chemistry with our punter Riley Dixon so hopefully we could have somebody that has similar or better chemistry with our punter so that we could maintain that special teams ranking 
So hopefully that comes through and the special teams I do expect to play a major part in this game because I expect it to be a run first game. I expect it to be a old school football type of game where it's going to be decided in the trenches, it's going to be running the football and you're probably going to see a good amount of field goals more so than touchdowns. And this may be a surprise to you guys but I actually think the Giants have the advantage in, a, in the run game compared to the Steelers. And I think it lies solely on the fact that we just have a better running back. Of course, Saquon Barkley, probably the best running back in the league. Right now, if he's second to anybody, is just one person in Christian McCaffrey. While the uh, Steelers, they're kind of looking like they're gonna go with a running back by committee type of uh, game plan there with James Conner. Benny Snell, Anthony McFarlane, Jalen Samuels. I think we all know the Giants are definitely going to lean on Saquon a lot and I expect them to do that this game. And the reason I say it comes down to just the running backs is because looking at these old lines, they're a lot more even than people realize. I know the Giants offensive line has been, you know, been made fun of a lot the past three years and rightfully so because we've had one of the worst offensive lines the past three years in football. I do think it is improved. We do have a good set of new starters though. We have three new starters on that offensive line. One of them being the fourth overall pick Andrew Thomas who I do have confidence in. I think he's going to take time to fully get to where he nets to where to where he needs to be at because of the fact that he didn't have a full offseason to transfer from you know being a college player to an NFL player. We got a new center, Nick Gates, who I'm interested to see how he's going to perform a former tackle shifting to center and he won the job against last year's center Spencer Pulley. That's going to be something to keep your eye on. And a new right tackle in Cam Fleming, a former Patriot, former Cowboy, kind of a swing tackle for the entirety of his career. It's going to be interesting to see how he performs as well, although a lot of people expect them to be replaced maybe sometime during halfway through the season or whatnot. But the same can be said for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Not necessarily in the fact that they got three new starters, but I see three question marks here, just like how the, our starters are question marks. I see a question mark in their left guard, Matt Feller, their right guard backup if David DeCastro actually does not play in uh, Kevin Dotson, and their right tackle in Zach Banner. These are not guys that are certainly up to standard of a David DeCastro, Andrew Villanueva, and Marquise Pouncey. Those are the three guys that I just listed are formidable offensive linemen in the NFL. Uh, Matt Feller, uh, Kevin Dotson, Zach Banner, not so much. And I do think that we're evenly matched there in terms of offensive line. You could argue we could be better because of an Andrew Thomas maybe puts us over an edge, over the edge there. Either way, if we're close in the offensive line side of things, what it would come down to would be the running backs for the running game. And I think Saquon has proven what a worse offensive line than what he has this year that he can produce. Now, of course, Along with that, I do have a bold prediction, all right? I think Saquon is gonna go for 150 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. Whether or not this leads to a win, we'll see. But I really do think he's gonna have a really great first game. He's gonna try and come out and prove to everybody that he's still the best running back in the league. He's gonna try and come out and show that, yo, the Giants got something going here. I think he's motivated, along with basically the entirety of the roster. But with the running game, of course, you gotta consider is the defense. The run defense of the Pittsburgh Steelers is something that we got to consider. And it may be better than the Giants, right? It may be better than the Giants, but I could argue that specifically the run defense, not pass defense, not overall defense. I could argue just like with the offensive line, specifically with the run defense, the Giants may have an advantage here. I'm just going to really quickly highlight our defensive line. I think a lot of people underestimate and underrate the Giants defensive line, especially when it comes to the run game. That's what it's built for. Leonard Williams, Dalvin Thompson, Dexter Lawrence. You got two first round picks on that on that line. <laughs> One second round pick in Dalvin Thompson who plays like a first round pick. One of the more underrated nose tackles in the league simply because nose tackles are not really used like that anymore. A Leonard Williams who when he came over to the Giants last year, yeah, he was disappointing in the past game, but he helped improve the Giants run game a lot. And then Dexter Lawrence, 17th overall pick in last year's draft that performs better than the third overall pick in Quinn and Williams. Let that sink in both in pass rush. People underestimate this dude's ability in the pass rush. He can get off of blocks fairly quickly and is really good at batting passes. And of course, in the run game where he's an absolute monster. And let's not forget about Blake Martinez and, and the cleanup crew that's going to be the Giants linebackers. For the most part, if you're going to get through that Giants defensive line, you're going up against the linebacker who's led the NFL in tackling for the past three years. And I'm going to shift into the pass rush a little bit now. But before I do that, because of the fact that the inside of the Steelers defense, um, offensive line right now, I think is a bit vulnerable, especially with the Castro gone. 
I'm going to say a little bit of a bold prediction here. The Giants are going to get sacks from three or four people this game. I'm not saying how many, but I do think these three guys are going to at least get to the quarterback. That is Marcus Golden, Lorenzo Carter, Leonard Williams, and maybe even Dexter Lawrence. Depending on how much they switch up and, you know, exchange Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams on whatever sides they're going to be lined up against, I do think they could take advantage of the Pittsburgh starting guards. But of course, let's not kid ourselves here. When it comes to the pass rush, uh, the advantage completely goes to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's not forget that they have TJ Watt, who was in the running for defensive player of the year last year, had an absolutely great year, looking kind of like his brother JJ in his prime, and TJ is just entering his, or you could even argue he's not even at his prime yet. Of course, Bud Dupree, not somebody at all you want to take lightly and Cameron Hayward from the inside can get some sacks as well. Steelers 100% have the advantage on pass rush and I definitely expect the offensive line, the Giants offensive line that is, to struggle against these guys. I do expect Daniel Jones to get hit quite a few times during this game. We gotta remember, Pittsburgh was number one in sacks and takeaways last year, man. They were top five in the passing game, which is kind of another reason why I expect the Giants to be running the football a lot this game. And they were top 15 in the run, sixth overall defense. Do not sleep on the Pittsburgh Steelers, even though, you know, I do think we have a chance. Let's not completely forget what these guys were last year. This Pittsburgh team was completely kept afloat because of their defense last year. So like I said, passing may take a backseat in this game. And if it really does come down to an old school football game like I expected to, you know, running and all that, I think the Giants have a better chance. Now, I mentioned that the Pittsburgh pass defense is formidable. The Giants, not so much. If they want to keep it a passing game, these cornerbacks and these safeties are going to have to perform out of their mind. And that's not necessarily saying that Pittsburgh has an incredible wide receiving core or something like that. No, I actually think they have a pretty average, maybe above average, a good wide receiving core. And depending on how Big Ben comes back, and this might be an X factor, depending on how Big Ben returns from his injury, how he recovers, and I've seen the reports saying, oh, he feels better than ever, or all reports are saying that he looks better than ever. Guess what? We as Giants fans have heard those reports about Eli Manning for like the last five years of his career. And each of those last five years, he turned out to be worse than ever. Big Ben is the same age as Eli. He's had way more injuries than Eli. The dude is surely going to decline soon. I'm not saying it's going to be this year, but it's something to keep your eye on. And I would take those reports with a grain of salt. Depending on how Big Ben comes back. If he comes back and he is that 2018 form 5,000 passing yards, we're going to be in for a long day because I don't think our secondary can come back with that, could uh, compete with that. But if he comes back, he's not fully recovered or at the very least for maybe he's concerned or Tomlin is concerned or, you know, they're just taking it slow like I expect every NFL team to do because of the weird offseason. They probably don't have their plans fully installed or maybe they want to just start off and get the rust off with the run game. I expect the run game to be more prevalent than the pass. Of course, however, Giants defense, man, I'm looking at Jabril Peppers, I'm looking at Julian Love, who is still listed as a starting free safety, I'm going to expect Logan Ryan to be out there a couple of times, he for sure does not know the playbook because he's only been here a week, looking at James Bradbury, and 100% looking at this man Darnay Holmes, the rookie slot cornerback, because he's going to be matched up against Juju a lot, and uh, he might struggle, but I do think that he could also thrive, man, Darnay Holmes is probably the most prepared cornerback I've ever seen coming out of college and I really expect him in terms of the Giants defensive rookies to translate very easily I mean you you guys know my bold prediction for the season Darnay is going to be in the running for defensive rookie of the year that's how much confidence I have in him and I'm not just a Giants fan with my Giants blinders on guys like Deion Sanders have even said that he's possibly the best cornerback out of this year's draft the guy shows that he can compete and he's one of the smarter players on the team right now you're gonna have to keep your eye on that and hope that they perform. Now, speaking on the Giants passing game, um, another reason as to why I do think it might be running, I already gave you know several already, but another reason would be because we're not sure about Daniel Jones' fumbling issue yet. And I don't wanna make this into a big deal because as OGR, one, the, one giant rebuttal, one of the YouTubers I frequently work with has pointed out, fumbling is fixed by winning. Carson Wentz fumbles all the time, but nobody mentions it because he wins. And even then, if you don't want to agree with that, guess what? Lamar Jackson had a fumbling problem his rookie year, came back the second year, and it was fine. It's not a guarantee, but I do expect Daniel Jones' fumbling to be, you know, toned down this game. And if he does pass, what am I going to be looking for? I'm going to be looking for to see if he improves a lot. I'm going to shamelessly plug my DJ breakout video here that I made earlier this year. 
but he's put in so much work in the offseason, man. He spent um, time with David Cutcliffe. He spent time, you know, organizing workouts before training camp began with the wide receivers, with the running backs down in Texas where it was safe to do so. He's gained 10 pounds of muscle. He's gotten bigger. And, you know, he's just been having a stellar training camp. I'm going to be looking to see if that translates on the field. Because either way, a second year quarterback usually takes a step forward than a step backward. So I'm going to expect improvement from him. It ain't going to come easy, though. Remember, Pittsburgh, number three in pass defense last year. Binka Fitzpatrick and Joe Hayden. That's all I need to say. I don't know if Daniel Jones could conquer that. I'm going to keep it real with you. Once again, might be a run heavy game. Hopefully, if it is, we have a chance. And at the end of the day, like I said at the beginning, this is a game with a lot of implications. It reminds me of the 2018 Week 1 game against the Jaguars that the Giants played. That that game also had a lot of implications, was very similarly set up. If we won that game, we would have had a lot of momentum going into Week 2 and even Week 3, starting off 1-0. Why the Giants don't usually start off 1-0? We usually lose Week 1 at least for the past decade or so. The only time we actually won a Week 1 game was in 2016, I believe. And like I said, man, we win Week 1 here. We will stun not only the Steelers, but the NFL. We will put people on watch. The Giants will go into Week 2 with sky-high confidence. They're going to go into Week 2 playing their best football because that's what it's going to take to beat the Steelers, right? Um, And if we beat the Steelers, man, what's to say we can't beat the Bears? But at the end of the day, it's going to take a lot of things going right for that to happen. It's going to take the game sticking to the run. It's going to take not that many passing. It's going to take the Giants pass rush actually getting to Big Ben quite a few times. It's going to take Saquon to get at least 150 and two tubs. It's going to take quite a few things, which is why I still say that the Steelers win 24 to 21. I know a lot of Giants fans are hyped right now because of Joe Judge and whatnot. I am as well. We got to keep it realistic, though. It's going to take a lot to win this game, but I keep the score very close because I do think the Giants are vastly improved from last year, and I do think they're going to be better than what people expect them to be throughout the season. I would love for them to start off with a win. I just can't see it yet. So Steelers take it 24 to 21. I won't be surprised if they do win though, you know, it's it means that they followed what I said they had to but won't be surprised So that's my preview of the Steelers at Giants 2020 week one put your comments down below Let me know what you guys think and I'm out Thanks for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe and share I'll catch y'all in the next one